crazy, uh, crazy time we're living in, crazy world going on out there. Um, with the, uh, the glut of security camera footage and all the, the violence and uh, protests, you know, police, police around the country are overwhelmed and they're tired. Quite frankly, they're not interested in doing their jobs up to the, um, the high, what I call diamond specification. I call it platinum level status. Usually when police are on the job, the investigators, the detectives, the private eyes, these guys are all just like in a Hollywood movie, just like in the movie Die Hard. Okay, they're willing to go the extra mile, jump over hurdles, jump from a burning building to save the life of a citizen. That's what police are like. I call it diamond level or platinum level protection, depending on what jurisdiction you're in. Um, but quite frankly, that's not the way it is right now in today's, today's day and age. And um, a lot of people are using that weakness to, uh, a lot of people taking advantage of that weakness to get some free sneakers. Um, a lot of white, white people doing this, throw bricks through windows. Most of the people I've seen doing this are KKK members, to be quite honest with you. Um, however, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. However, um, it's entirely plausible that someone could take advantage of this lapse in security, lapse in diamond or platinum level protection, as I call it. My tax money, um, I pay half my money. Uh, the money, the business that I've spent 10 years working towards, fucking staying up staying up all night, many nights a week, working my fucking ass off, building a business from nothing, generating, uh, generating income and uh, making money. And I, I'm, I think half of it, spending half of it, I look at my tax bill and I look at the diamond level platinum protection that I get where my motorcycle's being stolen by Mexicans and the police tell me that there's nothing they can do even though there's security camera footage of the incident and um, Israel uh, sending uh, one trillion bajillion dollars per week to Israel to pay for hellfire missiles because they're so weak and unprotected. They need more and more missiles. They need more missiles in Israel. They need as many missiles as we can get. They, in the Bible, it says, Thou shalt give Israel missiles. Thou shalt give Israel all the missiles they need. And when I look at the amount of money, the amount of money that's raped from me, that I have bled and sweat for, I say, you know what? I'm not paying enough. I'm not paying enough. I should be paying 75%. When I talk to a cop, and the cop, he doesn't say... He doesn't have a bad attitude and he doesn't appear lazy. He doesn't appear like he's just a bureaucratic, paper pushing functionary who wants to get me out of his face. He takes an invested care in my problem. I say to myself, that's platinum. That's diamond. That is diamond. Anyway, there's some people, some people are going to be taking advantage of this last in protection, lapse in diamond or platinum level protection. I've said it many times before. I've got to say it again. The job they do, typically, not right now, platinum or diamond status, sometimes gold. But um, right now, you could get away with a lot of things. You could. Who knows what you could get away with? Who knows what you could get away with? Now, I think that it would be, quite frankly, anti-American and very naughty behavior to use this crazy time to get away with something antisocial and I would not recommend that I don't do I don't partake of that myself now however I had heard something interesting I was reading an article on BuzzFeed I think or maybe it was salon.com but it was about these kids who were um, they they had uh, negligent fathers or uh, parents who uh, medicated them parents who sent them to a doctor to give them some fluoride based SSRI pill that ruined their lives or completely fucked them up or um, you know maybe uh, people with a history of abuse maybe they were when their father was out of the picture they were molested or something by a stepfather or something I mean the types of stories that you hear are completely horrifying and um, these apparently apparently there's a group of, uh, of youths called the Boogie Town Boys and uh, it's not racial they wear Indian saris I guess they were partially inspired by the Boogaloo uh, gang but uh, they're, they're a mishmash, a socio-political mishmash of youths, and they've been going around um, uh, whipping, whipping their, the, fig the figures from their childhood that fucked their lives up, whipping them with belts, and uh, using the, hitting them in the face with the buckle. 
And there's something specifically funny to me about that type of revenge. I don't think you should, uh, I think it's probably a pretty, pretty bad idea to, to kill someone for revenge, but if someone did you dirty in the past, hitting them in the face with a belt buckle, that's funny to me. I'm sorry, every time I see one of those videos on Worldstar, I'm going to hit like. And um, obviously you shouldn't do this. What if, hypothetical scenario, what if the person who tormented you as a child or, or sent you on the road to ruin was the engine of your destruction as a weak, uh, Im impossible to protect yourself seven-year-old, okay? That person at that point in your life was a giant to you and had uh, un unimaginable strength. And now, there's, and now you're telling me he's 65 years old and wheezing and he's, uh, he's got a bad a bum ticker and he can't, uh, can't walk up a flight of stairs and you're 22? and you have a belt on with a buckle that snags when it hits, to me, that's the, that's the breeding ground for a uh, crazy society. And you never enact that type of, of, you shouldn't even think about that type of situation happening. You shouldn't think about it. It's really easy to goad somebody into, a, uh, into swinging at you first. Um, the key is not to get all riled up and start shouting motherfucker and raging on them. What you want to do is you want to take their hot button issue, their private shame from 40 years ago and say it to them in a quiet voice right in their ear while smiling. And then uh, if uh, the person puts their hand on you, you are then legally free, I believe, in at least Pakistan, I don't know about the United States, to say, you're assaulting me, sir, and then start whipping them with the buckle of a uh, Hugo Boss belt. And that's what's wrong with the legal system in this country. Personally, I'm starting a petition right now to enact laws to make that behavior illegal, and I would recommend you never do it and don't watch these videos. You know, maybe if you weren't such an alcoholic, you wouldn't have lost the landscaping company. And maybe if you never crashed the Mustang, you'd still have the fishing boat. But instead of out fishing right now, you're 55 years old working for the fucking phone company. <laughs> I always thought fuck-ups like you only existed in movies. But here's one in real life. You know what? I'm sorry. You should hit me. Hit me. Please hit me. Hey, hey Chachi, you ever think about how uh, maybe if you hadn't cheated on your wife, you wouldn't be $50,000 in debt right now? Please don't hit me. Uh, in all seriousness, I think um, uh, success is probably the best revenge. Um, not needing revenge and success is probably the best revenge. <clears throat> and furthermore, it's pretty... Uh, Pretty difficult to focus on moving forward and building shit if you have some something itching in the back of your psyche. Uh, that being said, you know sometimes you got to fucking in you know sometimes cartoon characters have to have to hit people with belt buckles. Sometimes cartoon characters have to do that in Looney Tunes, not in real life. Um, but um, if there's someone if there's someone like that in your life, maybe go verbally. Them, at least old people, it's easy to you know. What do you? How do you verbally abuse an old person? It's easy. You just start screaming in their face. <laughs> You're so old now. You look like anything could kill you. What do you even do? You just watch shows. Aren't you sad that everything's gone? You just watch shows and it makes you feel like there's something there, but everything's gone. You're old. You're going to die soon. That sucks. Also, in case you're wondering, I was I stayed up all night watching uh, Stefan Molyneux videos and he often does call in shows with victims of child abuse. And I think that um even if even if it's not child abuse that people have suffered, people people carry this baggage with them. Um People let their, people let the fucking wreckage of their past infect the present and spoil the present and ruin the future. And um, there's a lot of like chicken soup for the soul type Zen. You have to let it go. 
stuff like that. And I think um, that's valid if you can do that. I think um, there's also something to, something to be said for uh, rolling up on uh, fucking Timmy, the high school bully with a fucking Hugo Boss for self-defense, cocked back, ready for self-defense only. And just fucking hit him with some, get good at verbally abusing people. It's useful skill. Also, I might as well say this while I have your ear, um, if you've watched this far. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of people, people are, people are so powerless to even like identify the source of their anger or trauma that they let it spill over onto other people, which is usually the reason why when you deal with somebody and they have like an attitude or... Um, an attitude out of nowhere. I mean, it's all—it's always the case that there's something that they're powerless to control that's fucking with them, that is making them, um, st making that stress spill over onto you. And I think that that is um, that that force unchecked in your personality. If you have something that is um, causes a lot of pain, anger, frustration, etc., and you let it spill over into your other relationships, into the rest of your life. Uh, it's almost like you're letting the person who um, did you wrong continue to do you wrong and have have power over your life um, because that that having a chip on your shoulder in the, in that way like it makes it so that other people don't want to be around you it makes you makes it so that you're a magnet for magnet for shitty people um, and it you know makes it so you don't you don't make money you do poorly professionally like people uh, people there's something wrong with you um, so I think that dealing dealing with things directly that's what the Hugo Boss belt buckle joke is it's not like trying to incite violence or something it's like the the things that issues in your life should be dealt with directly um, it, ne it never does to go about things in a roundabout way really at all unless unless you're dealing with like a hysterical woman I don't want to rag on women right now, but in, unless you're, there's there's very few circumstances where it makes sense to go about it in a roundabout, weaselly, passive way. Should always deal with things directly, in my opinion, um, and that is a wise opinion, in my opinion, which again is my opinion, which is wise. So basically, you're entering into a loop, a self-sustaining loop of diamond level, platinum grade protection, sometimes gold. Uh, if you really think about what the truth is in a lot of situations, like think about exactly what happened and then like slowly, articulately lay that, lay that out for somebody, um, in a way that's like, um, a specific type of way that's intimidating because it's like unyielding. Um, and then you did this and then you did that and then you did this. Like that's, um, you can, you can really throw somebody. if someone if, if it's true if it's the truth that you hit someone with and you do it you do it in that way you can fuck somebody up you can you could probably get more you could probably get more out of that in terms of like closure clarity revenge whatever it is that you that you're looking for than you could with a fucking belt buckle maybe i don't know why are you watching this i'll leave you with one more thing this is a little party favor grab bag goodie bag treat okay this is going to be coming from the hide wars that i'm going to do on driving which just might save your life gum.co slash hide wars hope you're subscribed if you're not i'm mad at you i'm mad at you uh here's here's this one okay this is your your fight or flight go to all right your ner nerves are popping you can't think of what to say it's game time you got to stare somebody down you got to you got to have beef, all right? You got road rage coming. The typical one that you're going to want to do, that you're going to feel the instinct to do, that you're compelled to do is this. Hey, fuck, fuck you, motherfucker. I got you on camera, motherfucker. Fuck you. I'm filming this. I'm filming this right now. Fuck you, motherfucker. That does nothing. That intimidates nobody. That just makes you look like a fool. And you're going to be in the YouTube road rage compilation if you do that. What you want to do instead is you want to set your eyes in like this and then go like this. It's like this. <laughs>
Can I <laughs> Can I help you? Do you need help right now? That's always, that's my go-to. That's what I do if I'm flustered, which I don't get flustered anymore, but that's what I did years ago when I got flustered. Then you also wanted to hit him with this. If there's any f threats of physical violence, they say, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna beat your ass. I'll beat your ass. You go like this. <laughs> you wanna hurt me? Please, you wanna hurt me? Yeah, you wanna hurt me? You wanna cause me pain? Ooh. I'm gonna get hurt. If anybody ever messes with you on the street, road rage, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker. You just go like this. You get, you turn into 6'5", 280, and then you go like this. Oh. 